Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. This is part 4 of the self-driving simulation using convolutional neural networks. In this video, we are going to prepare the data for processing and split it up into training and testing. So let's get started. Okay, so next step is basically preparing for processing. Now, what we are basically doing is that we want to put all the images in one list and then we want to put all the stating values in one list. Right now, our data is in a pandas format. What we want to do is we want to put it in a list and then we will convert it into NumPy arrays so that we can use them easily. So this is a very uh, simple step. So all we have to do is we can create a function, load data, and we can give in our path and we can give in the data. So let me write here, this is step number three. And we can go back to utilities and then here we can write load load data and then we have our path and we have our data now in here as we, as i mentioned before we need two lists so so we will write here images images path is equals to an empty list now again we are not importing the images at this time we are just preparing the paths so that whenever we want to import we can just refer to this list or an array and then we can simply import then we will create staring the staring list and now what we can do is we can loop so we can say for i in range of length of our data we are going to find the indexed data which is basically your data dot i lock and at the index i so basically what we are doing is we are grabbing one entry of our data so let me print this out so you can understand indexed data so if i run this And there you go so we are basically you can see this is uh, okay it starts from here for example so it will tell you the center the left the right steering throttle brake speed for each of the entries so as you can see the very first element of our entry is our center so if we want to access center we will just refer to the element zero and you can see that our steering is element number three so zero one two three so we will access that using three so here we are going to write that images path dot append so as you can see here we have the center value now what we want is we don't want just the name of this we cannot simply import with just the name we want the name of the folder it's in and the the parent folder as well so the parent folder is my data and then we have image and then we have this uh, image name so we have to add these as well so what we can do is we can write here that os.path.join and then we can write our path that's why we needed this path which is basically my data and then we want to add to that image so we will write here IMG and then we also need the image name. So this is our image name, which will be the index data at element zero. So that should do it. So if we print this out, print, um, actually let's just print this out so that we can see what are we talking about. So let's comment this out and let's print that
and there you go so now we are getting my data slash image slash uh, center whatever the name of the image is so that is fine so we can remove that and then we also need to add to our staring so we are going to write staring dot append and we are going to write inside that we need the indexed data at element number three as we discussed earlier and this has to be float so we will write here float so once we are done with the for loop what we can do is we can change these lists to numpy arrays so we can say that images path is equals to numpy dots as array and then we will just say images images path and then the same thing we will do with staring and we will say numpy dot as array and then we will say staring and that is it and then we can simply say return and we want to return the images path images path and then the staring So that is it. So now we can go back and we can unpack over here the images path and then the staring. So if we want to test it out, we can print the images path, let's say at zero, and then we can print the staring, let's say at zero. So this will give us uh, the first element of both of these arrays. and there we have it so this is the the path and the staring angle is zero and you can see it is float so that is good now what we can do is we can move on to our fourth step so the fourth step is basically splitting off the data so we are going to split our data into training and validation. Now the training data is basically what we will be using during the training process. And the validation data is basically the data that we will be using to test the performance of our uh, created model after each of the epochs. So after it trains one time, it will ch uh, check with the validation data and then it will train again. And then it will check again with the validation data. Now keep in mind the validation data does not affect uh, the weights or the parameters of the uh, model. It's just for testing. So so we can be assured that the validation data is, is completely alienated to our model. It, it is uh, completely new to that. So that's why we need the validation data so we can see that how well it will perform or with the data it has not seen before. So to split that we are going to use uh, over here we are going to import we will say from sklearn we want to actually it's in the model selection and then we are going to import train test split so now we can write train underscore test split data and then we are going to send in our data which is basically our images path and then we have the corresponding starings so actually we should write images path and then starings so this should be s starings and then we have to define how much we want to split so over here we are going to write test underscore size is equals to 0 0.2 so 80% will be for training and 20% will be for validation. And we can define here a random state as well, uh, how much randomization you need. So we can give in, for example, a value of five. So what this will output is basically the X train and then the X validation values. Then it will also output us the Y train and then the y validation 
so these uh, train T R A I N so now what we can do is we can print out the values of X train and X validation so that we can see how many uh, images we have for each so we can write here that print total total training images and those are basically the length of your x train and then we will print the total validation images and then we will have the length of our validation so let's run this and see what happens and there we have it so now we have 2816 images for training and 704 images for validation so that is good now we can move on to step number five so this is it for today's video in the next part we are going to augment our data to add more variety and variance. This will help us in the training process to generalize more efficiently. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and I will see you in the next one.